So, so one of the things that we learned uh, through this is um, that Robert's Board of Education um, and, and, and 30,000 flat teachers lost their jobs after Brown for Board of Education for all the reasons that you can imagine. Miss Hattie Clay was one of those teachers who needed to take a master, get a master's degree so that she could get close to being equal to her white counterparts. She and so she was here when she was in her 50s getting her master's degree, and she passed away like even before she was old, uh, she was legally able to vote. Okay. Um, and so, we wanted folks to know, our students to know who, who Ms. Hattie Clay was, right? More history is forgotten, more history is ignored than is taught, and so we wanted to, to do our little part in, in changing that. So, then we will learn a little bit more about that. Dang, Gonzales. <laughs> <laughs> So this is shared with all of you and from the perspective of, of an educator. As an educator, or as educators, excuse me, we are told that history is irrelevant. But we know that history is interwoven into every core subject in education. We cannot remove history as if it was a piece of loose, unraveled thread. It is imperative that our students discover their academic heritage. We are told that there is only one narrative of our nation's education system. We hope, though, that delving deeper into our university's academic heritage, students will learn to become culturally relevant in their own classroom instruction. You see, we hope they learn that prior to Brown versus the Topeka Board of Education court case, that black teachers counted as much as 35 to 50 percent of teachers, even in the segregated Southern school systems. We hope they learn that the 1954 Brown versus the Topeka Board of Education court case did not resolve inequality in our education, but instead widen the gap in southern states. We hope they learn that because of Brown versus the Topeka Board of Education court case, that black teachers were demoted or dismissed due to the non-segregation of schools throughout the South. We hope they learn that a black female teacher by the name of Hattie Walker Clay Wilhoyt graduated from Fisk University, journeyed to the rural area of Clarksville to teach English for over 30 years at the segregated Burt High School. We hope they learned that in 1956, Hattie braved the uncomfortable all-white university campus while listening to taunting racial slurs. We hope they learn that in 1957, Hattie became the first teacher to graduate from this all-white university with her master's degree in education. We hope they learn that Hattie's story raised more questions with no answers. We hope they learn that Hattie's demise in 1961 was only a few years prior to the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. We hope they can finally hear Hattie's once silenced impact. You see, like pearls hidden with unassuming shells, the wisdom and strength of quiet people can leave a lasting and positive impact on those who take the time to listen. Silence speaks volumes.
We hope they remember the silence yesterday of our academic heritage. We hope you remember. Thank you.